Hi everyone, this is David Capetti and welcome to Vico Graphics Studio. In today's video I wanted to share with you guys a really cool plugin that I downloaded for Rhino. So it's going to be called Polyhedra. But... And so here in Rhino I'm opening up that application. And what it allows you to do basically is it gives you a huge long list of geometries that you can kind of cycle through and you could use for your designs. Um, now, this uh, some of these I've used in the past for uh, using it as, as a base geometry and then subdividing it further using Grasshopper. So, um, yeah, there's a bunch of different designs and here at the top, you're able to kind of cycle through the different types. So there's uh, these type of solids. There's so many different ones that you can just, um, you know, spend some time kind of playing around and seeing the different geometries that they were able to come up with here. Now, to download this, I would go to Food for Rhino, and I'll have these in the description, but you're going to go here and you're going to download it either for Mac or for Windows. So basically, when you finish downloading this plugin, you'll have that ability to have this little window where you can play around with them. Also notice that there's different ways to output the, the geometry. You can do it just by faces. So this will actually have it like exploded or grouped and colored. And then here it would be solid. solid. So um, yeah, there's different things that you can play around with there. Now, the other thing that I want to share is downloading Weaverbird. And Weaverbird is also free, and you can download it from um, this website, which I'll have linked. Um, and this one is going to allow for us to subdivide it further and do some other cool things here in Grasshopper. So let me show you kind of my uh, how I go about it. Now, I also do sell some 3D models, and this is kind of a quick method of creating cool geometries that you could even post and sell uh, sell online. So here um, I'll go to a new layer and then I'll, I'll type it in polyhedron and I'll pick one that's fairly subdivided. So we'll do this one and then I'll go zero, enter for the location and then here shaded view. And there we have basically a geodesic dome. We can take this one and I'm actually gonna change the color of the layer and call this dome. So now that we have this, um, it's easy for us just to kind of play around with this because it's a solid. But for me, the cool thing to do is take this and bring it in here. So I'll double click here and go to B rep. And I'll select this one and go to set one B rep. And what I'm basically doing is taking this geometry in here so I can take the B-Rep edges. So here, I'll go. And now what I can do is here using Weaver Bird, I'll use this one that says Weaver Bird to mesh from lines. And I'll use the Let's see if it's the interior lines. Yeah, the interior lines go in here. And now we basically turn that into a mesh. What happens is uh, when you disable the preview of the edges, you're gonna have the mesh here, but you're not gonna be able to see the edges. So here we'll go to b rep for mesh edges. That way we can plug this in here and be able to see what we're what we have here. Now, the next step is going to be to subdivide it further using some of the Weaver Bird components here. So, one of the ways to create basically a frame is going to be to take this subdivide and we can create um, uh, the picture frame and we can go like this. Now we will hide this one, and now we see that we have that. Uh, we have the ability to create basically a wireframe thickness, and 
with this one, we'll give it a distance of... It was already a 5, so we can always increase it. Now, what's good is that if you do 3D printing or anything like that, this is something that you'll be able to output into an SDL fairly easily because we already have it as a mesh. So, uh, the other thing is to give it some thickness. We'll go here to Mesh Thicken, and we'll do the same thing. We'll plug in the mesh here, and we'll plug in the 10 there. And if you are not able to see the lines, it's because we're not previewing those mesh edges. Now we can disable that preview. And there we have our geometry. Now it's a little bit thick, so I'm actually going to bring in a different slider and use that. So I'm actually going to disable this preview. And we see basically we have a thick wireframe geodesic dome. Now this is just straight sections, so I'm actually going to bring in a custom custom preview, and that way I can display it with a color swatch here in a different color. And we could even do the same thing with the edges. Instead of red, we'll turn them a different color. So you can kind of see the actual geometry and we always have that ability to kind of come back in here and either make it thick this way or we could do it the other way, right? We can bring in a negative component and be able to plug this in here and then plug that into there and actually go in, right? So instead of extruding out, now we're extruding in. And if you don't like how straight the sections are, there's other ways of sub subdividing it and making it look smoother. It's gonna be, I think this one is gonna make it smoother. So if we plug this into this one and we go to a level three, now we're doing something a bit different. So I'm gonna disable the preview on that one. And now you'll see that we have this more smooth type of um, dome geometry. And we can decrease the, the level of quality it is. So zero is gonna be the same. And then if we increase it to three, we have it further. And we could always increase or decrease the frame size. So this is gonna determine how big that pattern is gonna be. So this are the different ways that you can kind of um, display it. But for me, right now, I think this is gonna be, this is looking really cool in my opinion. And the frame got thinner. That's because I decreased this, this size. And so what I'll do is I'll take, um, let's see, we still have the base geometry, which is gonna be this mesh. And so I'll actually, hmm, I'll actually extrude it out. That way the mesh is sitting in the back. And I'll, um, I'm actually gonna export this and do a render just to show you kind of what you could do with this one. And you're not just bound by this geometry. We can actually just bring in another one. So let's, let me show you. Hmm. I'm trying to think of which one of these. Okay, so let's bring this one in. So let's say you didn't like that geometry as much as this one. You can take this one and do the same thing. So we'll go here to set one B-Rep. Oh. So we'll select this one and go to set one B-Rep. Oh, it's because these are grouped, so I'll uh, join. 
and it joins it together. And now it'll, I can do set won't be ripped. And it'll do it to this one in the same way. So just showing you um, the different ways that you could basically bring in geometries here. So I'll join this one. I think this one most already joined together. So I'll go to set one be rep. And so basically as long as you have this script, you're able to um, uh, subdivide geometry that you bring in from that uh, plugin.